respected audience assalamu alaikum i am professor shamsid jaman professor of pathology i welcome all in today's 30th lecture on systemic pathology today day 8 of diseases of respiratory system Day 8 of diseases of respiratory system. Today's topic is bronchogenic carcinoma. Dear audience, before going to discuss about bronchogenic carcinoma, we have to recapitulate the different types of tumor of lung. Suppose this is lung, the tumors of lung may be benign and malignant, benign tumor and malignant tumor. Dear audience, benign tumor is uncommon, but malignant tumor is common in lung. benign tumors of lung is uncommon but malignant tumors are common malignant tumors of lung may be primary malignant tumor and the primary malignant tumors of lung may be bronchogenic carcinoma it is about 90 to 95 percent besides the bronchogenic carcinoma carcinoid tumor these are bronchial carcinoid it is about 5 percent of all primary malignant tumors of lung primary malignant tumor of lung and secondary that is metastatic tumor of lung So, the malignant tumors may be primary tumors of the lung or may be metastatic tumor that comes from outside in the lung. Dear audience, again lung tumor may be benign, it is uncommon, malignant, it is common. Malignant tumor may be primary malignant tumor, among the primary malignant tumor, most common tumor is bronchogenic carcinoma next to bronchogenic carcinoma carcinoid tumor other than primary malignant tumor of lung there is secondary tumor or metastatic tumor of lung now come to bronchogenic carcinoma first come to histologic classification of bronchogenic carcinoma Squamous cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma is also known as epidermoid carcinoma. Known as epidermoid carcinoma. Dear audience, we are talking about the different types of bronchogenic carcinoma and it is known as 
histologic classification of bronchogenic carcinoma. One is squamous cell carcinoma, it is also known as epidermoid carcinoma. Another is adenocarcinoma. combined squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma combined squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma it is also known as adeno squamous carcinoma adeno squamous carcinoma adeno carcinoma is also divided into bronchial derived bronchogenic carcinoma another is bronchiolo alveolar derived bronchogenic carcinoma Dear audience, if this is the bronchi, and if this is the alveoli, adenocarcinoma that occurs in the bronchi that are called bronchial derived bronchogenic adenocarcinoma that are bronchiolo alveoli derived called bronchiolo alveoli derived bronchogenic adenocarcinoma we are talking about different types of bronchogenic adenocarcinoma one is bronchial derived bronchial derived adenocarcinoma may be a sina type adenocarcinoma in this type of bronchogenic adenocarcinoma the anaplastic cells are arranged as a sinai this is a sina type of bronchogenic adenocarcinoma papillary type bronchogenic adenocarcinoma in this type of adenocarcinoma anaplastic cells are arranged as papilla this is the papillary type of bronchogenic adenocarcinoma another type of bronchogenic adenocarcinoma that is bronchial derived solid solid type of bronchial derived adenocarcinoma now come to bronchiolo alveolar derived bronchogenic adenocarcinoma bronchiolo alveoli derived bronchogenic adenocarcinoma small cell carcinoma and large cell carcinoma A small cell carcinoma may be Ort cell carcinoma 
In this type of small cell carcinoma, the cells are lymphocyte-like. Anaplastic cells are lymphocyte-like. These are the odd cell carcinoma, one of the variety of small cell carcinoma. Intermediate cell carcinoma. In this type of small cell carcinoma, the cells are polygonal. Cells are polygonal. combined type. In this type of carcinoma, a small cell carcinoma is combined with a squamous cell. A small cell carcinoma combined with a squamous cell. So, a small cell carcinoma may be odd cell carcinoma, cells are lymphocyte like, intermediate cell carcinoma, cells are polygonal, combined type a small cell carcinoma combined with a squamous cell. Now, come to large cell carcinoma, bronchilo alveoli drift. undifferentiated large cell carcinoma clear cell large cell carcinoma giant cell large cell carcinoma dear audience in case of undifferentiated large cell carcinoma cell are neither a small cell carcinoma nor squamous cell carcinoma. It is undifferentiated large cell carcinoma. In case of clear cell carcinoma, cells are large with water clear cytoplasm. In case of giant cell carcinoma, the cells are abnormally large. This is all about the histologic classification of bronchogenic carcinoma. Dear audience, bronchogenic carcinoma may be classified as a small cell carcinoma and cell carcinoma. Now come to what are the characteristics of a small cell carcinoma. A small cell carcinoma is more aggressive than large cell carcinoma. A small cell carcinoma mostly metastasize than the large cell carcinoma. Small cell carcinoma mostly metastasize than the large cell carcinoma. A small cell carcinoma has a strong relationship with tobacco smoking. A small cell carcinoma. has a strong relationship with tobacco smoking than large cell carcinoma. A small cell carcinoma mostly occurs at higher 
area of lung. Dear audience, suppose this is the lung and this is the hilum of lung. A small cell carcinoma mostly occurs near the hilus of the lung. A small cell carcinoma is associated with the most of the paraneoplasic syndromes in bronchogenic carcinoma. A small cell carcinoma is associated with most of the paraneoplastic syndromes of bronchogenic carcinoma. Dear audience, a small cell carcinoma is more aggressive than large cell carcinoma. It is highly metastasizing carcinoma than the large cell carcinoma. It has a strong relationship with tobacco smoking. It mostly occurs at the hilar region of the lung and the paraneoplastic syndromes seen in bronchogenic carcinoma mostly due to a small cell carcinoma. Dear audience, now come to predisposing factors of bronchogenic carcinoma. tobacco smoking industrial hazards air pollution genetic factors lung scarring. Tobacco smoking, industrial hazards, air pollution, genetic predispositions, lung scarring are the predisposing factors of bronchogenic carcinoma. First come to tobacco smoking. Dear audience, it has been suggested that bronchogenic carcinoma is about 10 folds common among the smokers than non smokers. So, bronchogenic carcinoma is about 10 folds common among the smokers than the non-smokers. About 80 percent bronchogenic carcinoma found among the smokers about 80 percent of bronchogenic carcinoma found among the smokers. Cessation of smoking reduces the risk of bronchogenic carcinoma. We are talking about the predisposing factor of bronchogenic carcinoma. Important predisposing factor is tobacco smoking. It has been suggested that bronchogenic carcinoma is tenfold common among the smokers. About 80 percent bronchogenic carcinoma is found among the smokers and cessation of smoking reduces the risk of bronchogenic carcinoma. Dear audience, suppose this is the bronchial tree.
you know it is lined by pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and there is cilia that is the bronchus is lined by pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and the epithelium are ciliated. A smokes of tobacco causes irritation in bronchial tree. A smokes of tobacco causes irritation in bronchial tree. Ciliated columnar cells of bronchial tree replaced by a squamous cell and this is called squamous metaplasia. Due to smoking there is squamous metaplasia in the bronchial tree and this metaplasia may turn to dysplasia and dysplasia may turn to carcinoma that is bronchogenic carcinoma. This is all about the tobacco smoking associated with bronchogenic carcinoma briefly. Dear audience now come to industrial hazards. All types of radiation is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. Example bronchogenic carcinoma was common in Hiroshima and in Nagasaki following atomic bomb blast. Dear Rodins, we are talking about industrial hazards associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. Bronchogenic carcinoma was common in Hiroshima and in Nagasaki following atomic bomb blast. It suggests radiation is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. Bronchogenic carcinoma is about four times common among the uranium miners than general populations. Gerodians, bronchogenic carcinoma is about four times common among the uranium miners than the general populations. It suggests radiation that is industrial hazards is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. One is all type of radiation is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma, another is asbestos. Dear audience, asbestos is recognized as carcinogen. It is recognized as carcinogen. We know the agent associated with tumorogenesis is known as carcinogen. Now come to air pollution. Dear audience, we all swim in the sea of carcinogen. We all 
swim in the sea of carcinogen. Carcinogen is the agent associated with carcinogenesis. So, we all swim in the sea of carcinogen. So, air pollution is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. Air pollution is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. Now come to now come to genetic predispositions. Dear audience, occasional familial clustering of bronchogenic carcinoma suggest genetic predisposition. Occasional familial clustering of bronchogenic carcinoma suggest genetic predispositions. Dear audience, we know there is familial clustering of breast carcinoma, familial clustering of colorectal carcinoma and occasional there is familial clustering of bronchogenic carcinoma and it suggests genetic predispositions. Dear audience, if anybody suffers from bronchogenic carcinoma, on searching we can get patient of bronchogenic carcinoma among the close relatives of that patient. It suggests familial clustering of bronchogenic carcinoma. Now come to lung scarring associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. Dear audience, suppose this is the lung, there may be a scar in the lung, there may be a scar in the lung and this scar may be following this scar in the lung may be following old wound in lung or old infarct in lung. If any old wound in lung or if any old infarct in lung, there may be fibrosis, that is, there is a scar formation. And within the scar, there may be bronchogenic carcinoma. And if we get bronchogenic carcinoma in the scar following old wound or following old infarct, it is called scar carcinoma. It is called scar carcinoma. Dear audience, scar carcinoma is a desmoplastic tumor that is. In scar carcinoma, there is increased stromal tissue than the parenchymal anaplastic cells. So, scar carcinoma is a desmoplastic tumor and lung scarring is associated with bronchogenic carcinoma. Dear audience, this is all about the predisposing factors of bronchogenic carcinoma briefly. Now come to usual location of bronchogenic carcinoma in lung. Usual location of bronchogenic carcinoma in lung. Dear audience, squamous cell carcinoma commonly occurs in the hilar region. 
स्कॉमर सेल कर्सिनोमा commonly occurs at hyalur region suppose this is the hyalus squamosal carcinoma commonly occurs at the hyalur region एडिनोकर्सिनोमा कॉमनली ऑकर्स एट पेरीफेरी ऑफ लंग सो एट द पेरीफेरी ऑफ लंग देर इज एडिनोकर्सिनोमा दीज आर दूजुअल लोकेशन ऑफ ब्रोंकोजेनिक कर्सिनोमा इन लंग Dear audience, if anybody suffers from bronchogenic carcinoma, how can we diagnose bronchogenic carcinoma in laboratory? Now come to laboratory diagnosis of bronchogenic carcinoma. X-ray chest. reveals consolidation suppose this is the lung there may be consolidations like this sputum for cytopathology dear audience we are talking about bronchogenic carcinoma suppose this is the bronchial tree if there is bronchogenic carcinoma here and if the anaplastic cells are exfoliated and comes along with the sputum and if we do cytopathology of this sputum we can get anaplastic cell so sputum for cytopathology may reveal anaplastic cell if there is exfoliation of the anaplastic cell from the bronchogenic carcinoma we can get anaplastic cell if we do cytopathology of sputum bronchial washings or bronchial brushings for cytopathology bronchial washings or bronchial brushings may reveal anaplastic cells city guided fine needle aspiration cytopathology if we do city guided fine needle aspiration cytopathology it will reveal anaplastic cells bronchoscopic biopsy and histopathology if we do bronchoscopic biopsy and histopathology it reveals either is comma cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma or a small cell carcinoma 
और लार्ज सेल कर्सिनोमा और अनडिफरेंशिएटेड कर्सिनोमा अनडिफरेंशिएटेड कर्सिनोमा अगेन ब्रोंकोस्कोपिक बायोप्सी एंड हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी रिवील स्कॉम सेल कर्सिनोमा और एडेनो कर्सिनोमा और स्मॉल सेल कर्सिनोमा और लार्ज सेल कर्सिनोमा और अनडिफरेंशिएटेड कर्सिनोमा ट्यूमर मार्कर इफ वी एस्टिमेट कर्सिनो एम्ब्रॉनिक एंटीजन सी ई ए विल बी इलेवेटेड इन ब्रोंकोजेनिक कर्सिनोमा डियर ऑडियंस अगेन वी कैन डायग्नोस ब्रोंकोजेनिक कर्सिनोमा इन लेबोरेटरी बाय एक्सरेस्ट स्पूटम सेटोपैथोलॉजी ब्रोंकियल ब्रशिंग्स और वॉशिंग सेटोपैथोलॉजी सिटी गाइडेड एफेनेसी बायोप्सी एंड हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी ब्रोंकोस्कोपिक एंड बाई ट्यूमर मार्कर कार्सिनो एम्ब्रॉनिक एंटीजेन डियर ऑडियंस दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द लेबोरेटरी डायग्नोसिस ऑफ ब्रोंकोजेनिक कर्सिनोमा ब्रिपली नाउ कम टू हॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पैरानी प्लास्टिक सिंड्रोम वी कैन गेट इन ब्रोंकोजेनिक कर्सिनोमा Paraneoplastic syndromes in bronchogenic carcinoma. Syndromes may be hyponatremia, and this hyponatremia may be due to inappropriate secretion of ADAs by cells of bronchogenic carcinoma. Due to inappropriate secretion of ADAs by cells of bronchogenic carcinoma, Cushing syndrome or Cushingoid syndrome. it is due to elaboration of acts by small cell carcinoma due to elaboration of acts by small cell carcinoma hyper calcemia in bronchogenic carcinoma it is due to elaboration of parathormone by the bronchogenic carcinoma due to elaboration of parathormone by bronchogenic carcinoma hypocalcemia hypocalcemia is due to elaboration of calcitonin due to elaboration of calcitonin by bronchogenic carcinoma gynecomastia this gynecomastia is due to elaboration of gonadotropin by the bronchogenic carcinoma due to elaboration of gonadotropins by bronchogenic carcinoma carcinoid syndrome carcinoid syndrome carcinoid syndrome in bronchogenic carcinoma is due to elaboration of serotonin due to elaboration of 
serotonin. Dear audience, we are talking about different types of paraneoplasic syndrome in bronchogenic carcinoma, hyponatremia due to inappropriate secretion of ADAs, Cushing syndrome or Cushinoid syndrome due to elaboration of ACTAs, hypercalcemia due to elaboration of parathormone, hypocalcemia due to elaboration of calcitonin, gynecomastia due to elaboration of gonadotropins, carcinoid syndrome due to elaboration of serotonin. Dear audience, this is all about the paraneoplasic syndromes in bronchogenic carcinoma briefly. Now come to pancoast tumor. Pancoast tumor of lung is an apical carcinoma of lung. An apical carcinoma of lung in superior pulmonary sulcus an apical carcinoma of lung in superior pulmonary sulcus that invades cervical sympathetic trunk Again, pancoast tumor is an apical carcinoma of lung in superior pulmonary sulcus that invades cervical sympathetic trunk and produces severe pain along the Unlar nerve distribution. So, if this is lung, this is apical carcinoma of lung in superior pulmonary sulcus, and this cancer invades the sympathetic trunk and produces severe pain along the distribution of ulnar nerve. Along with severe pain, there is Horner syndrome. And Horner syndrome is composed of an ophthalmos meiosis ptosis and anhydrosis. Dear audience, Horner syndrome is composed of N ophthalmos, meiosis, ptosis and anhydrosis. Pancoast tumor is known as Pancoast tumor according to name of scientist Pancoast. It is an apical carcinoma of lung in superior pulmonary sulcus that invades sympathetic trunk and so there is severe pain along the ulnar nerve distribution. There is Horner syndrome and this syndrome is composed of in ophthalmos, meiosis, ptosis and anhydrosis. This is all about the pancreas tumor briefly. Today I have told you bronchogenic carcinoma briefly. Today after this, thanks all.